and welcome to another episode of the Brick and Dodger Show. Brick is not with us, but today we are going to be talking with Kostaki Economopoulos. See, I got it right this time. Last time I, I fudged it up, but uh, he, you might have heard him on the Bob and Tom Show. Uh, he's from uh, At All Pro Line, so be sure and check him out, Kostaki. Thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. I'm headed to Idaho soon. I'll see you in a, in a couple days, man. That's right. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so uh, let's talk about, uh, first of all, Dak Prescott signed a four-year, $240 million contract. He's 2-5 and five in the playoffs. Is he worth all that money? Oh, man. When you're a, court, when you're a team that doesn't have a top-10 quarterback – all you can think about is we got to get a top 10 quarterback. So I understand why these guys who are good at their jobs get paid crazy amount of money. I'm a Falcons fan. Yep. We paid a crazy amount of money to a guy who doesn't look good at all. So, <laughs> yeah, and I'm sorry for jinxing you on that one. I I, <laughs> I was watching the game. Uh, the, the 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 Falcons looked really good on that first drive. Just couldn't do anything after that hardly. Uh, so uh, do you? Th- think it's going to be time to put Michael Penix in there pretty soon if uh, uh, Kirk Cousins doesn't uh, perform any better. I don't think so, but I think that will be the talk here soon. And uh, I mean, who who knows? Maybe that's the answer. I don't think that's the right choice at this point. I mean, he had an off game. It was his first game in a year. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's coming off an Achilles. He's rusty. He's got a different team and a different offensive coordinator, a different coach. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd give him a little space. We know him to be a good quarterback who sometimes has off games. We, everybody does. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's time to panic yet, but I have to say, I kind of dig that there's another guy in the conversation who could be good enough. We never had that before. Right. So I'll take it. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks who've coming off of, uh, Achilles injuries, uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, played Monday night. He showed uh, glimpses of, of, the past of of how great he was in the past, not very mobile anymore. Uh, Is this as good as he's going to be? Or do you think there's uh, going to be some improvement in his future? I think he'll improve. I think he's rusty. He's also an older guy with an Achilles injury coming back. The first drive was, he looked great. It was like old Rogers laser beams all over the place. Yeah, I think he's, it was also playing one of the top two or three or four or five defenses in the league. So I think he'll be all right. You know, if he could stay healthy, he's a good player. I've got mixed feelings about the guy personally, but man, yeah. when he's on, he's he's good. Yeah, uh, and you know, uh, like you said, uh, 49ers look great, uh, even without uh, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, they're uh, they're feeling uh, running back uh, did a phenomenal job. I think he had like 140. 345 yards uh, for them. Uh, played great. The whole defense was, was phenomenal. Uh, is the San Francisco 49ers the team to beat in the NFC, you think? I do think that. I, I mean, I think there's lots of teams who could compete. We're very early in the season. Obviously, the Lions mm-hmm. would be in the conversation. Maybe the Rams. Mm-hmm. Maybe the Cardinals. But, yeah, absolutely the, absolutely the Niners are the team to beat. And, yeah. then, and on the other side, I think it's probably closer, but I think you have to say the chiefs are the team to beat. So yeah, these are the, these are the giants in the current universe. And, and until they're knocked off, I mean, they're the team. Right. And uh, I'm sure we'll see another chiefs and 49ers super bowl uh, uh, in our future. Uh, you you got to think though, that the 49ers are, are going to be a little bit better uh, th- uh, this year. Uh, they'll probably uh be the favorite in that Super Bowl, I would think. I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. I uh, Yeah. I mean, there's so much to happen between now and then with injuries and yeah. ups and downs and swings. We can't anoint them yet, but they're definitely the they're definitely the teams to beat in the, yeah. in the short run. I'm, I'm rooting for the Lions. I would love to see a Lions great story arc. Why not? Yeah, that would be great for the city of Detroit. Uh, they don't really have a whole lot to root for uh, with the Tigers, you know, and and the Red Wings. Uh, but yeah, it'd be great for the city. And they played my Rams. Uh, I'm going to be co- uh, going to the show on Friday with my Rams jersey. So, you know, uh, you know, take it easy on me. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it's it, it uh, it's going to be great for the city. Um, uh, how do you think the uh, the Rams looked on that f- first game on Sunday? Do you think uh, they missed Aaron Donald at all? 
Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the Rams are a good team. I, I think they're fun to watch. I'm, you know, I'm a Kyron Williams fantasy manager, and so I, okay. uh, I'm rooting for them. I, I, I went to Georgia, so I love Matt Stafford, and mm -hmm. and they're kind of my LA team. I've been trying to like the LA teams, you know, as much yeah. as I can. I'm glad that Harbaugh's in town, and uh, trying to like the Chargers a little bit too. They're they're they've been they're getting to be more fun to watch. Both of those teams, right? Uh, speaking of ups and downs, uh, Tyreek Hill had had a few of them uh, last <laughs> couple of days. Uh, uh, who do you think is at fault? Uh, do you think that uh, uh, Tyree Kill handled that situation wrong, or do you think uh, maybe uh, the police overreacted in that situation? I think it's clearly both. If you if you watch the the body cam footage, mm -hmm. Tyreek is clearly being a jackass. He's not listening to the cop. He's not being respectful. He's not rolling down his window. And they overreacted and were gigantically heavy-handed and out yeah. of line. Yeah. So I mean, I think I think both both sides have arguments, and ultimately, uh, the you know it's the job of the cops to protect us and treat us all like humans along the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tricky. I, I you know I'm not a big Tyreek fan off the field. I think he's a sh schmuck. Uh, <laughs> but he made a good point. What if he's not Tyreek Hill? Does yeah. this does this go differently? What if there aren't video cameras? Does that go differently? These are fair questions to ask, and maybe it sparks a conversation that we all need to have again. So, yeah, I guess that's the good thing that comes from it. Uh, speaking of speaking of schmucks, uh, we got to end on the whole thing with Deshaun Watson. <laughs> I, I'm sure you've just got more material uh, about him than than any other comedian. Uh, he, you know, he, he, another charge came up uh, after the game on Sunday. Uh, he he's definitely not uh, a top quarterback anymore. Uh, I, I'm thinking this could be his last year in in uh, in the NFL. Uh, it, is it time to just uh, is it time to just let this guy go and and, and just lock him up already? Because <laughs> the guy just cannot function as a human being. Obviously, he has no respect for women. Uh, yep. Yeah, no respect for the law. It's just it's just just crazy. I've never seen anything like it before. It's crazy to me that I, I saw an article. I didn't get a chance to read it, but the headline was, is this the worst trade in NFL history? And I'm like, yeah, I don't even know what second place would be. Yeah. You, you could, you could you, I suppose Russell Wilson is on that list and the Herschel Walker trade that mm -hmm. led to the Cowboys dynasty is on that list, but it completely destroys both of those trades in my opinion for being horrific. First of all, it's a crazy amount of guaranteed money for a guy who hadn't, who wasn't going to play for the first year. We didn't know if he was going to be good. They gave up three first round picks. I think, I believe the guarantee was $270 million, no matter how he played or what happened or whether there was an injury mm -hmm. just on that, just that on its face, <clears throat> three first round picks. Not to mention that he's a monster and a yeah. terrible face for your franchise. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it all, he comes back and he's not good. And Baker Mayfield, who you kicked out of town and desperately <laughs> gave all the money to the new guy right. because you were worried he wasn't good, has gone away and gotten good. Yeah. So it's like, it's all of the strikes. It's it's a horrific trade. Yeah, and you know, if it could happen to any franchise, it's going to happen to the Cleveland Browns. They are... <laughs> The, the most unluckiest franchise in in sports history, I think. But this one isn't just bad luck. This was a terrible decision. Yeah. I mean, we knew it at the time. I was writing jokes about it at the time. At the time, there was this, there was a picture that was leaked that had a uh, Deshaun Watson Falcon jersey in the background. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Thank, good. thank God my team didn't do that. So teams, teams get desperate, like we were saying off the top. When you don't have – a Dak Prescott or better, you panic and you do everything you can to try to solve the quarterback quandary. But man, the Browns really screwed the pooch on this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brick just joined us. Uh, hey, Brick, hey, uh, you, you remember Kostaki, I'm sure. And Kostaki uh, remember, hopefully remembers you. Uh, do you have anything uh, to ask Kostaki before we uh, let him go for the, uh, for the day? Uh, not really. The only thing I would say is when you come back to Wisconsin, man, I need another show from you. 
<laughs> Wisconsin's on the docket. I'm doing uh, I'm, I'm doing Idaho this week. I'll yep. see uh, I'll see Dodgerman this week. Yep. And Wisconsin is on the schedule for uh, November. Yeah. Oh, let's go. And, and yeah. Do you uh, I'm I'm sure you got whole new material. Uh, you'll be uh, I'm working. Telling... I'm writing. I'm yep. trying. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it, man. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I can't wait, man. Uh, good to have you on the show. Thank you so much for for being here. Uh, we'll let you go. Have a great day. And, My pleasure. Uh, Thanks for having me, boys. I'll see you. I'll see you in a couple days, man. All right, we'll see you. Uh, this has been Dodger and Abrixer saying peace, love, and baseball and football. We'll see you next time. We're out.